everybody, and welcome to Churchy Chats with the Church Girl. I am so excited about July, and that's because we have all ladies all month, so we are welcoming you to the She Shed. If this is your first time here, my name is Alicia Wiley. I am the owner and creator of A Church Girl, which is a clothing line that has kind of evolved into a lifestyle brand, and we seek to uplift and inspire everyone we have the opportunity of connecting with. And these two ladies tonight, I'm so glad to have them. Now, let me tell you, I know I've been telling y'all I've been sliding in people DMs, and I, I, I really truly have. Um, but Alexis, let me tell you how I found Alexis. She was on a game night. She was on like a Christian game night. And I, I y'all, I just been out here looking for, for guests and people that are like-minded. So I was like, yo, I saw you on the game night. You want to be on my show? And she was like, sure. So I am so, so glad to have her here. And, um, I have somebody who I know in real life, Tawana, <laughs> um, and how Tawana and I met nobody would probably ever believe this because I don't really work out. It's really a miracle um, that I've ever made it to a gym. But I go to a gym and my regular class, I couldn't make it to, but I was determined to work out. So I was like, let me catch this other class. And at the end, she played a Tori Kelly song. And I was like, well, first of all, she has such a sweet spirit anyway, but she played that song and I was like, okay. Okay. So I went up to her after and I was like, can you tell me the name of that song? And she told me the name of the song. And I just, I just felt connected to her. I found out that she preached and I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> so really when to me, truly, when you meet somebody who is a, a sister or a brother in Christ, you really don't meet a stranger. You know, your souls connect because you're connected through Christ. So I am so happy to have Tawana here. We're going to have Alexis to introduce herself and then Tawana, then we're going to get into these juicy topics. Hi, everyone. I am Alexis Brown. I am um, a pastor in, ordained in the United Methodist Church. Currently, I am the United Methodist chaplain at Howard University. And um, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, um, and I'm just happy to be here. Thank you, Alicia, for the welcome and for the invite. I love, love, love good conversation. Let's get it. I'm so excited to have you here, Alexis. Thank you for being here. Hey, Tawana. <laughs> hey. Hi, everyone. My name is Tawana. Um, I, I'm a certified group exercise instructor, personal trainer, certified nutritionist. She do it all, uh, y'all. Licensed cosmetologist. Come on. Uh, on a gym, salon. <laughs> so listen, I'm here to get you healthy from the top to the bottom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She says she is getting y'all right. <laughs> she is getting y'all right. I'm so happy to have you here, Tawana. Um, so I, as you, as I have said um, last week and this week, that it's all women this month, and I did not orchestrate that. That's just kind of how it happened. So I was like, you know, let's do something just a little bit different. So I want one of our topics to be kind of like a girl talk conversation. So I asked the ladies to share something that they are or have been insecure about and how they've overcome that insecurity. Whoever wants to go first, feel free. Okay, I can jump on. So um, <laughs> that's actually a great question because um, one of the things that actually led me into uh, fitness was, was growing up, I was very insecure about how I looked you know, my uh -huh. body. Mm -hmm. And um, I really struggled with that uh, to the point of um, pretty much almost taking my own life. Oh, and wow. so, you know, through, during that whole process of really just finding my identity, first of all, in Christ, and even not in that, but just knowing that, you know, God has made fearfully and, you know, wonderfully made me as an individual. Um, that's how I actually started my journey um, into fitness. Now I'm going to be 100% transparent. If y'all, uh -huh. you know, if y'all don't mind the realness, um, Keep it honest, real. it's not something that goes away or has gone away. I should mm -hmm. say it mm -hmm. is something daily that I put into practice, even as a fitness professional and, you know, being in the light, it really is something that I put into practice daily to make uh -huh. sure that those insecurities don't overtake me again, if that makes sense. But, um, I definitely have to always, you know, be conscious and aware of, you know, what I'm paying attention to and different things like that, that could kind of trigger those insecurities. But sometimes it, it shows up, child, even in fitness. I'm telling you, child. Sure. <laughs> so how has fitness helped you, Tawana? How has fitness helped you to, to kind of keep that at bay? 
um, number eight, it has definitely gave me an outlet. Um, and it's also shown me that every body type and every look is different. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one of the things that I like to say that fitness isn't a look. <laughs> mm -hmm. Healthiness yes. isn't a look necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely gave me that outlet to realize that, hey, I don't have to look like this particular thing to be beautiful. You know sure. what I mean? And seeing sure. all of these different athletes and seeing all these different, you know, people that's in the fitness, I'm like, I could be cool with how I look. You feel me? All I got to, and you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, people feel like that because you may not like something about yourself, that that's an issue. I'm like, sometimes you buy a house and you don't like the wall color. So change it. You know change what I mean? It. But I always say, um, you know, check your mindset first. You know what I mean? Address those habits and those behaviors mm -hmm. um, that kind of cause you to think that way. And then from there, go for it. So that's another thing that fitness, fitness has helped me, helped me to change my mindset and my habits, how I look at myself, how I look at exercise, eating right and things like that. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that um, oftentimes we feel like we can cross certain bridges and have be crossed forever, if that makes sense. So I appreciate you saying that, you know, we deal with some things and some things we will always deal with. We just have to learn, you know, those things that help us get through those things and that things, those things that help us to, um, control it and keep it at bay as much as possible. Right. Right. So what, what, what is an insecurity that you would share with us, uh, Alexis? So in this season of mine, I have discovered, so speaking about something that you always deal with, um, mm -hmm. me and Alicia, we were talking about how I'm a PK too. And one of the things like growing up as a PK, I never, it, it was very hard for me to make friends. Uh-huh. 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 So, uh -huh. Um, in this season, I'm like discovering that little girl in me that hasn't really healed from it because mm. I found I found out like, OK, I, um, I need trust in circles. And because, of course, like when you let people in, you you, you run the risk of being betrayed or you mm. run the risk of of somebody um kind of not necessarily being happy for you or you not really dealing with, you know, when, when you're a kid, you, you deal with all kinds of issues or, or even myself being not happy for my friends or, but for me, um, it was that she makes you all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get that a lot. And it was like, no, no, no. I just, I just want to be your friend. Like I'm cool, please. Hey. And um, what I did was isolate myself and like mm -hmm. I grew very content in my family. I grew very content in like keeping my circle small, which I which I still think it has merit. But I recognize that that little girl in me is still very insecure and 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 fears grow out of that. So when when I meet new people, new friendships or people that that I'm like, oh yeah, you're a cool person, and and um, just colleagues that you you need that community, especially in COVID nineteen right now. We need community. Um, I overthink stuff, and I'm like, oh, maybe they don't like that. Maybe they didn't like me, and I just kind of play into that. And um, I've been taking this mindfulness course, and it was something about being vulnerable and not over and and knowing the difference between loneliness and um and solitude mm -hmm. Just because mm -hmm. someone's not reaching out to you doesn't mean that it's a form of rejection sure. or just because I don't reach out because that's not me. All my friends, they had, they are the ones who pursue who are like, Hey girl, you got to come out. Hey girl, mm -hmm. you know, because I am, I am like afraid of reaching out and afraid and afraid of rejection. So that's one of the things I'm working on in this season, just even in my grown self, just like trying to explore that and heal that that part of me of of being fearful. Yeah. And I think that's something that we deal with. And I'm gonna add Latasha to our stream. Um, hey girl, hey. Hey girl. <laughs> can y'all hear can y'all hear Latasha? Yeah. Tasha, say something. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Perfect. Okay. 
So um, speaking on what Alexis just said, I think that there are so many insecurities that women deal with, but especially acceptance and especially, and I, I hate to use this phrase, but it can be clickish and, and people can be clickish and it may not even really be on purpose. Like, I, I don't want to always make it seem like a group of friends are intentionally being, um, you know, snobbish or clickish or mean girl esque, but that is oftentimes the feeling that we get. That is oftentimes what is portrayed. And I've had this conversation. Somebody, somebody was like, I believe PKs are very clickish. And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? Are you saying that we're clickish with our siblings? Or are we clickish with one another, like with other PKs? And they were like, well, both, because y'all believe y'all better. I was like, whoa, hold it. <laughs> no, that's not the case. For me, I've never really been close with a lot of PKs. So for me, that hasn't been my testimony. However, a lot of the times people who are close together, they're, they're close because of reasons that they have a common ground like anybody else. So I'm like, I don't think it's fair to say that these people are super cliquish when it's natural to bind with somebody and to be close to somebody who knows the things that you go through and experience some of the same issues. So I, I, that whole PK thing, you know, I it, it's a forever situation that, um, you know, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's something that will forever be. Yeah. You know, a thing. Know. My my daughters are going through it. So I, I definitely get it. You know, yeah, it, it will forever be a thing. But Tasha, is there something, an insecurity that you would like to share that you have overcome? And how did you overcome it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to get everyone's response. <laughs> Insecurity. And it doesn't have to be huge, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, life shattering. So I would say um, just one that I dealt with recently, mm -hmm. and which, of course, I'm human. So I've had for insecurities that I've worked through, especially in therapy. I, you know, I talk all the time about how I go to therapy. I need a therapist. How it has helped me. Lord, I need a therapist. <laughs> Oh, I got you. So just <laughs> recently, uh, I applied for a job. I applied for a position at my job. And it was a supervisory job. Mm -hmm. And I have never been a supervisor. Okay. And so I was a little insecure about it because it wasn't just the first line supervisor. It was a supervisor to supervise supervisors. Okay. And I'm like. I'm going to the throne all bold. See, you haven't even been a supervisor. And you can have the nerve to apply for this job where you will be supervising supervisors. Other folks, and right. The thing was, I was confident because it was a pro it's a program manager position. And I've mm -hmm. been a program manager for years. I just didn't have that supervisory experience. Mm -hmm. And I got the job. And I've been doing it for the last two months. Thank you. And sometimes insecurity slip in mm -hmm. because I remember like, girl, you supervise. Like, do they know I haven't been a supervisor before? Right. Do they right. know that it's my first time in this role? But what I have to remember, not to sound all super holy, is God qualifies the call. Sure. So sure. if he called me to, I'm qualified. So that was an insecurity I had to overcome because I work with other women. Mm -hmm. I supervise a team full of women. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm like, if they find out I never supervised, they're going to be ready to call me out. Yeah. But, you know, I know my work. I know my stuff. So I just have to remember that he calls the qual he qualifies the calls. So that's why I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I think for me, too, well, even with just like applying for stuff, I think that would be one of the things that recently has kind of been a thing in my life where I would be like, I'm not even going to apply for this because I can't do it or I've never done it or the experience I have is not enough. But I'm going to be honest. I look at other people and I'd be like, well, if sis is doing it, then surely 
I can do it. No shade on nobody. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people have been a great inspiration to me because I would stop myself over and over from opportunities because I would just feel like you're not good enough or you're not ready. And when all actuality, um, this was a conversation that I saw a while ago, how many people of other nationalities are allowed the opportunity to kind of train on the job. Like, no, I don't have the experience, but we gonna go on and give you the job anyway, because we believe you can do it. Okay, well, if I have to, you know, exaggerate a little bit to get where I need to be, I'm not gonna lie, I might just fudge a little bit, just so you understand. I mean, sometimes we have to do that to get somewhere, but my thing is, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to grow myself and develop and do what I have to do to meet that whatever goal I'm trying to meet. And I have to keep telling myself, you are capable. You are able. You can do this. Um, so it, it's mostly just a, a constant pep talk. And Tawana and Alexis touched on these being things that are not really completely, you completely ever overcome, but things that you kind of constantly deal with and you kind of constantly wrestle with and God takes us to a new place in these things. And, and we don't always deal with it in the same manner, but we have to continue to trust God to bring us through every insecurity, everything that makes us uncomfortable about ourselves and trust that we can do whatever we put our minds to. Right. So quickly, uh, Tasha, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Then we're going to go to our first commercial break. Talk to the people, Tash. You gonna let me do what? Introduce yourself before we go to the next segment. Can you hear okay. me? Hi. I, <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. Okay. Hi. I I am Latasha Houston. I am an author and a blogger. I have a book titled The Seven Year Promise. And my blog is Biblically Led Cornbread Fed. And the mission and purpose of my platform is to help women own their imperfections. Mm -hmm. um, my motto and my hashtag is I'm imperfect too. The girl you see that looks like she has it all together, the girl who ha has the degrees and a good government job, she, you know, she cries, she has imperfections, she has flaws and insecurities too, just like you. But I can get over them. You can get over them. And we don't have to be perfect. Amen. And that's a, uh, I have the book, by the way. Um, but I think that's, that's an excellent, um, it was an excellent time for you actually to share that because of what our conversation is. And um, if you all trying to look for somebody for something, look, check Tasha out. She is an amazing woman. And I promise you that you will be blessed by her content and the things that she puts out, her testimony, all, all of that good stuff, all of that good stuff. Okay. So y'all, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, but then we are coming back with the, our thoughts about this good August Alcina situation. Let, let, let's take a little break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Feeling good, feeling lovely, ayy. Hey. Hey. Feeling more joy on the way, ayy. Hey. It's written all over your face. It's, it's a whole mood celebrate. Break. Feeling so fly with the vibes on high. Ah. Feeling alright when you're walking the light. Ain't lifestyle like a morning. Hey. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we are back. And if you have not been living under a rock the past, maybe what, seven days, maybe two weeks? Um, there is a, a, he's a recording artist. I, I, I had to do my research because, you know, I feel so out of the loop sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm old. But um, August Alsina is a um, recording artist who claims to have had a relationship with Jada Pinkett Smith that Will Smith approved of. So um, Jada didn't say anything until will enter the narrative, right? So when she, when he said that uh, will approve, sis came right on up. And what she said was, she hasn't really said anything, but she said that I need to bring myself to the red table because there's some healing that needs to take place. I, I have my thoughts, but I would like to hear you ladies, what you ladies think first. What, what do you think about him coming out 
making these claims and, and what do you think about the response, which is, we don't have a real response yet, but, but what do you think of it? Well, I'll, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> basically when I, when I thought about it, I was thinking, I was like, what, what is his angle? Mm -hmm. you know, what I, I asked the question, like, what is this about? And, and um, then I, I started thinking deeper in terms of, um, so I, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of like, so Jada and Will, Jada and Will are swingers, right? And that's their social contract in their marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that they are totally okay with, right? Um, and the guy knew he was, the guy knew that he's the other man, which mm -hmm. is like unheard of, you know, what, what was his purpose? But then I thought about how it's a double standard because there are, there are women in those, um, in those uh, predicaments where they come out and tell their stories. And, 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 and I guess the, the double standard was like, typically you don't think of a woman who, who has agency and power. But Jada does have agency right. in power. So right. it's like um if if um this guy, August, is feeling like abused in, in a sense and wants to tell his story, perhaps that is what's going on because mm -hmm. I wouldn't deny it. I don't know. Um and and maybe, you know, we we kinda gotta look at it from a lens of um the the Smiths having power. And, yes. um, you know, that that's that's kind of my initial thought. OK, what do you what do you think, Tawana? What what do you think about uh, <laughs> this here situation? So I'm kind of like you. I was like, wait, what in the world is going on? I don't know what's going on. But uh, when I did do a little bit of research and I watched the video, uh, when I believe Jada was uh, pretty much kind of given a little, I guess, background of uh, her and uh, Will's status. And to mm -hmm. be honest, one of the things I did respect about what she said, and I, I'm only basing it off of the little clip that I've seen. I don't know the, <laughs> the whole narrative or the whole story, but uh, how she said that uh, her and Will called themselves, I believe is life partners. Life partners. And I respect in her in a sense, where her and Will in a sense that they didn't call them, well, I'm assuming they said that called themselves like had the marriage context at one point in time. But I guess at whatever point in time when they shifted to whatever they're doing now, it's like we're life partners. And so I was like, honestly, that's one of the things that stuck out to me. I was like, well, I can't really say what y'all doing. You know what I'm saying? But what I will say is I respect the fact that y'all decided this is how we're going to do it. And we're not going to label it a marriage. Because if I could right. be 100 percent, the original purpose and intent of a marriage was between one man and one woman. So if y'all having like extra people, you feel what I'm saying in that thing? Y'all can be life partners. <laughs> Just don't call it a marriage because it ain't no marriage. Right. And I, and I, you know what? I got to tell y'all that I am so over the Will and Jada narrative with this marriage situation because here's the thing with them that's getting on my dog on nerves. They claim that they're in this life partnership. They're claiming that they are... Um, not married in the traditional sense, but every time something happens, y'all want to jump up and do damage control. Make up your mind. Either it's a life partner mm. and y'all being with whoever y'all want to be with, or y'all really don't want to do like I don't, I'm so confused with that because what would there be to protect if everybody knows that you all have an open marriage, which they have denied, but they they talk so cryptic. Oh, we have this life partnership, and and Will, you know, did said something about there's nothing that she could ever do that would yes. make leave her. So, what do we first think of when we hear that? Come on, we think of cheating. We think of having sex with another person, right? We don't think because if she was strung out on drugs, I'm talking about completely, totally strung out, selling stuff out the house. Done sold the house, done sold the car, done so I, I wouldn't be if you still talking about it's nothing that she can ever, ever do. You know what I'm saying? And I and I I'ma speak on August, but Latasha, what you say, Tash? So my my broadcast was going in and out. So I don't really know what the question was. Okay, it was what do you think about 
just August and him coming out and how it's been handled so far. Now, all we know is that Jada has said healing needs to take place and she's bringing herself to the table. But what do you think about August I making this, August is human. this truth? He's okay. Human. So that is the issue with, and remember on our episode a month or so ago, we talked yes, about yes. the marriage. Like we talked yes. about Sarah and Hagar, right? Yes. So yes. that is the issue when it comes to defining marriage your way, because mm, we're human. Point. It's marriage is made to exchange love. It's made to exchange feelings. It's made to have emotions yes. and those things be protected. So just because you're married to Will and you and Will allow me to access your partnership, it doesn't stop me from having feelings. It doesn't stop me from wanting you to do for me what you would do for your husband. Not mm -hmm. to mention that you say, he said your husband gave me the blessing right. so i'm thinking it's there are no limits the same thing that you do for him you would do for me because what's the difference you know about me he knows about me and we're all in this together all right so i don't blame him for coming out i mean i've been in love before and i've had some heartbreaks before and I can say, you know, I wanted to come forth about it and say how I feel. And that was just, uh, that was monogamous. So right. now it's like, you're in the limelight. You guys still have your partnership. You remove me out of it. I don't like it. And I'm going to talk about it. Period. And 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 I'm going to just read a couple comments. Um, uh, most of everybody is saying that they do believe him, but he should have kept it to himself. Um you know, he broke codes and um, there are just things that should not have happened as far as, as, as from his point of view. But let me say this. Here's the thing. Somebody uh, commented earlier because I put I put a graphic up asking what people thought about him speaking his truth. And somebody said that they felt that he had betrayed the situation. But here's my question. How, how do you betray it? So, so there's a social contract there, you know, and it is. But how do you truly, how do you truly betray sin? And and that I, I there it, here's the thing. Okay, let me back up. Let me back up a little, just a little. Jada, if y'all are gonna be in these other extramarital situations, first of all. Get you somebody good and grown. Now, August is 27 and no shade. I mean, I'm only 33. However, comma, get you somebody good and grown who understands what's going on. I don't blame August. I blame you for not having good judgment, sis. That, that no. Good judgment. I don't, I don't Go even blame her for the not having good judgment. And again, I hate to sound all holy. It comes back to not conforming to this world. You entered into a marriage. And the thing that I thought was so interesting about their situation is in that, that YouTube video, she says, we don't celebrate that day anymore. Right. Right. We don't focus on that stuff anymore. So at one right. time you did. That was what was so interesting to me. At one time you thought that the marriage was sacred. At one time you thought the date was important. And then you right. put your own spin on your sin. And now you, you want me to adhere to it. So let's right. go all the way back to what's really the problem. You're not honoring your marriage and your vows, period. And to that, Latasha, Renata says, we as Christians follow the Bible's example of what marriage should be. Everyone that gets married is not following biblical principles. That's absolutely right. However, comma, we are seeing the fruit thereof. We are seeing what happens, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian, we're seeing what happens when you let certain things in certain situations into your life, whether you buy into the biblical, you know, Principle. perspective or not. Right? Go ahead, uh, Alexis. I, I kind of take it from this perspective. Like, so if we, if we want to look at the, we want to look at the biblical marriage, we already know that the biblical marriage, women had no agency, you know? Especially right. in the Old Testament. So, like, we were literally proper, property. So, take that aside. Let's just talk about in terms of, well, for me, how I look at it is that there seems to be a social contract. I'm not necessarily against the term partner. I'm not against it because, mm -hmm. because you know, back in the day, I couldn't work, but I would be in, in the house taking care of the home and all that other stuff. But I work, too. And I got babies, too. Right. And I'm tired, too. 
I work just like you, bruh, telling my husband. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I'm tired. So, like, you know, and, and there is this expectation that we as women, we're supposed to work, we're supposed to look cute, and we're supposed to clean the house, and I'm supposed to cook. And it's like, if you look at it in a form of partnership, and, and you know, that's what I keep on saying. So I'm not, uh, I'm not against that term. You know, that's just sure. more personally. But it seemed as though that Jada and Will and August had a social contract where they he knew what it was. They're very private people. They mm-hmm. don't want this. This is between them and their circle. And because, like Latasha said, that he isn't August is in love, and he thought about it, and he's mm-hmm. like, "Wait a minute, I want to be on display too," you know. And so he took that social contract that they had. And there and there is definitely a social right, and there's definitely a social contract that has been broken. But I will venture to say that well, let me let me read a couple comments, then I'm I'm gonna make this comment because this might take us slightly another way. Um so my my sister Cuba said Lil August got his little feelings hurt and he tried to play the grown-up game and came up short. I, I mean I we can do nothing but agree with that, right? He Mm -hmm. got into a situation where he feels like, or let me say this, he got into a situation that he was okay with it at first. But Mm -hmm. then when things started to maybe shift, when Jada realized, I don't don't want to play no more, Mm -hmm. he had his feelings hurt. And this was his way maybe of trying to fix that or trying to speak his truth. And Corey says in marriage, isn't the bed undefiled, not condoning it for myself, but doesn't Will and Jada's situation have this cover? Well, here's my thing about that. I feel like whenever something pops up like this with them, it's this huge thing. So I'm having trouble believing that they truly, I I don't know. I, I have trouble believing that they're okay with their own agreement. Now I was just about to say that. <laughs> I, I have I trouble with that. To the root. Yes. I have trouble believing that it's just this is my partner and we choose to have fun. It's you do need to come to the red table, Jada, because it's something deep down inside of you that you need to heal. It's right. something that is not okay. I don't like I don't believe they're okay with this either. I don't. You can't or either it's an act, or either it's it's one or the other. Either you're okay with it. And you feel like you have an image to keep up. So this is a publicity stunt. But y'all have to make up y'all's mind what it's going to be, what it's going to do. Go ahead, Tawana. And I want to say this, uh, too. Um, I believe in every single human being that's on planet Earth, there is a God-sized hole that can only be filled by him. So what I'm saying is, at some point, every human being will face i don't care how far you run what you try to make up what you try to you feel what i'm saying at some point you're gonna have to face this void and no matter what so whatever's going on in will and jada situation i believe that it's coming to a head to the point i got to face this void because at the end of the day the only person that can feel it's it's god and and you see what i'm saying and it's so easy and I feel like um, I look at it from the standpoint of they're human. And if I could just be real, at some point in time, whether our situation may not look exactly like theirs, but each and every one of us found ourselves trying to fill the void. You right. see, see what I'm saying? Yeah, so true, true. It's like at the end of the day, yo, yeah, we, we got some healing and stuff we got to work through. Because it's kind of like what you were saying, Alicia, like being in sin at some point, if it, y'all gonna meet face to face and they're gonna be like, Period. yo, what's up? You feel me? Like, <laughs> straight up, straight up. <laughs> Either you're gonna be real or you're gonna be fake, but we can't uh, we can't travel the same road together. Like, so what's up? <laughs> Period. Period. And I completely agree with that. And um what I was gonna say right before that is how many people I, here's why I'm not beating up on August, although I'm not saying he's not wrong. <laughs> I mean, that he's right. Right. But how many people in God's church are sitting on a testimony, a testimony, a real life testimony that they can't tell because they cover another folks? Listen, so don't get mad that my testimony includes you when you decided to be in my life. You signed a contract on the slick. You, we, we made this, un, you know what I'm saying? We made this unwritten agreement that our testimonies will 
at some point maybe cross, at some point maybe include each other. But I know people who can't can't tell their testimony or can't share their story because of what it'll do to somebody else. But maybe mm -hmm. August like miss me with that. Miss me with that. You're not gonna shut me up because this is still my story, although it includes you. But that's touchy. That is a touchy, touchy, mm. touchy situation because what do we do with that? I'm not in the, I'm not in the, I'm not in the exposing business because I don't believe that God exposes right. us, he covers us, and love covers a multitude of faults. And God knows he has covered me. And I, I'm I'm not in that business, but what happens? when we cross those lines and then somebody decides to tell their truth and we just happen to be a party to that truth. What, what, yeah, what I do don't know. Do that? I Can we shut the mouths of the people who have a fair part to play in mm. this? Alexis, you were going to say something. Oh, I was just going to say that it just depends. Um, I was talking about this topic with one of my friends and I was just saying that, you know, we live in a time where, you know, we do have freedom. We have freedom and, and we have freedom. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't have boundaries um, right. um, with God. And it doesn't mean that we don't have right. boundaries Absolutely. with each other, with each other, because if we really think about if we love God and we love neighbor, how does that impact? So so the fact that Will and Jada in August decided to have this relationship, right? Or that's okay. But and maybe the silence is to protect the the children. I mean how, how does that how I'm glad do, you brought that in too. How do you support that? Because by nature, you know, we 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 got I'm sorry, I don't share. Period. <laughs> I, Period. I don't share my food, let alone my man. So miss me. Miss me. No. Oh, miss so me. <laughs> on this new um polygamy um thing i'm 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 fully with partnership i'm not mm -mm. i i'm jealous and i can't share so very and, yeah. I, and i will cut you covered. i, I mean in the safe sense <laughs> i'll cut you with the word <laughs> we have discovered that that jealousy, you know, over years of working that out, like yeah. that's why you want monogam monogamous relationships because it's like, it's too much. You Oftentimes know? we can't handle it. And I'm glad you brought in the children aspect because Reese just said their practices and beliefs has spilled over into the lives of their children. And that's mm -hmm. a fact. I think when I started to look at Will Smith in a different light was when these children started just kind of acting a little crazy. And I'm like, what is going on? But they are truly a fruit of their environment, right? Here's the thing though. We have to think about the choices we make and how it affects the people that are around us. If you don't want to hurt your children, keep other people out your bed or sit your little grown children down because they've been acting grown since they was two. So since they can understand everything, since they little grown tails down and tell them, listen, this is a situation that we have. And this is this is how our situation looks. I you you can't protect people from the wages of sin is death, right? We don't get to control who dies or what dies in the process. So if your children's respect for you dies because as a result to your sin, then that's the price that you have to pay. The wages of sin, there's a payment that has to happen there. And we don't get to control what happens. We don't get to control the fallout. We control our actions, but we don't control what happens in the next part of it, right? So and that's the part I don't understand. I don't understand. Now I'm not for um, exposing anyone either. I'm that's not my thing. Right. Me but, neither. It's like, what is August wrong for? Because the fact that they're in a partnership or an open marriage is not a secret. They openly say that. So why is he wrong for saying? Because I well, is the contract that we're in an open marriage but the people that we are open with is a secret and i'm i, I would i could right. respect it more if they were not honest about their open arrangement and then it was like i entered into this social contract with you shared it with you 
I'm only letting you know because we letting you into. But they're open about their open marriage. So why does he have to be quiet about how it made him feel? Right, right. And and Cuba said, I made the comment a couple minutes ago about people sitting on testimony. She said, I don't believe this is his testimony. I do believe he's hurt, wounded and lashing out. And I agree with you. I was just making the comment that there are a lot of people that don't say certain things or do certain things because it involves other people and they don't really have the freedom to speak on it because it would be exposing others. Right. right. It would be, you know, um, um, so my mom said that they let those children do what they want to do. So they can't be trying to keep it from them. Exactly what Latasha just said. Like if this is open and this is something that y'all do, then I'm not, I'm just not understanding where all the issues come in with them. That's why I'm fed up with the Smith family. You know, <laughs> they, they seem to be talking out of both sides of their mouth. And Renata said his relationship with Jada allegedly started when he was 21. Now he's 27. So you've been in this relationship. And from what I understand, he was a friend of Jaden's. First of all, come uh -oh. on, come on, leave your children, leave your children's friends out of this. Leave your children's friends alone. Like, what are we doing? And Reese said, free choices and earned consequences. Absolutely. We do not. Oh, I like it. I do too. Thank you for that, Reese. I'm going to steal it, but I'm going to give you credit, sis. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me with them. And like I said, it seems to be, oh, we're free. We're open. We're partners. There's no rom romanticism involved. But then it's always this huge um, damage control that happens as soon as somebody says they has have a relationship with them and y'all are really in this conversation. I appreciate y'all in the comments. I'm trying to read as many as possible. Don't think I'm, I don't see you. Um, but, um, August also had, um, drug issues. She had him on the red table and I used to watch the red table talk, but I got tired of Jada talking about healing these. I got tired of Jada. I had to let Jada go cause she was draining me, but, <laughs> Um, he was on the red table talk, talking about his drug addiction and mm -hmm. how close it was to the family and all of this other stuff. And, and, and when you take people in who have dealt with these types of things, we have to be very careful because they truly see any small change in relationship as betrayal, as abandonment. So if if you're not ready to do some spiritual healing with this young man, Jada, mm -hmm. you should have just you should have just been mama and not mother slash lover. Because it, you know what I'm saying? That's a very touchy situation. And maybe he does, maybe he just wanted to get a little, you know, a little something for his upcoming album. You know, maybe he wanted because I think Alexa said this, he is the lesser known in this situation. So where does my power come from? Y'all have all the power. Y'all have all the say so. Y'all do everything. Y'all are controlling this. Where is my control? Where is my piece of the pie where I have a voice? Oh, well, I'm about to give myself a voice right here. Watch. I'm going to go talk to Angela Yee and give myself a voice. So, I mean, we could talk about this all day long, but... <laughs> I, I appreciate you all's input on this and this next conversation that we have coming. Saints, I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready, Saints. And if, if you're a little, uh, well, we're going to go to commercial. I'm not even going to say nothing. I, I'm going to just go to commercial break and then we're going to get on into it because, nope, we'll be right back. Hold Tight Brown Productions presents Listen to My Thoughts with J. Damian Brown on Facebook every Tuesday at 9.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. Listen to my thoughts, a Bowtie Brown production. So guys, I meant to, I did not talk about our last commercial, our first commercial, which I meant to. Renata is my dear friend. She is um, a skincare, a black woman skincare provider, and she makes these fabulous products. Please check her out. I know it's Blackout Tuesday, but you're supposed to um, support Black businesses. So please do that. Check her out. Cocoa Lime is my favorite scent. So if you're looking for a suggestion, 
there you go. So the commercial you just saw is um, my friend and my coworker, Pastor J. Damian Brown. He's the minister of music at the Life Center Cathedral, pastor of music at the Life Center Cathedral. And he's an amazing talent. I'm going to be honest, he does so much in our ministry. I sometimes forget that he's a musician and he's an amazing musician, but he's just been playing the last couple um, Tuesdays. 9.59 or something like that. It's a little late, but I know y'all not sleep. So check him out. I done had church right at Bedside Baptist the last two Tuesdays. So check him out. Um, and I'm a pin. I'm on a pin Renata's um, website for a minute while we go into this next topic. Now, I felt, well, somebody sent this to me. Okay. So y'all, I sent it to the ladies and um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Let me just tell y'all what I think about um, sometimes with women preachers. I think there is a stigma um, sometimes with women preachers because I think sometimes we feel like we have to be mannish or that we have to present in a way that a man presents. Now, I'm not saying that this has anything to do with the next video, However, I think that is something that women in ministry kind of deal with because it's like we want people to receive us and we want people to, um, I don't know if it's like a familiar, I don't know why people do it because I preach and I, I can't hoop, but if I could, I would, let me just say that. But I would like to think that I would have a feminine hoop or, you know, whatever. But I'm going to let y'all watch this. And then, then we'll chat about it. Sorry about the, it's not a great quality video, but as long as you can hear, that's all that matters. All right, let's watch this clip. Balls back, if you don't get your balls back, you won't have no seed to bring forth no fruit. I didn't come to play today. Somebody shout, I'm getting my balls back. I'm getting my ability to produce. I'm getting it back. I'm getting it back. You can be sissified if you want to. But greater is he that is in Okay, people of God. <laughs> I um I don't even know. And I, I that's always my phrase, but for real this time. I what what do we make of this? <laughs> <laughs> what 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 do we do with that? What what do we do with that? Shara said, first of all, yes, yeah, sis. That's right where I that's right. That that's right where I am. That's right where I, I don't even know. I don't even know. And Renata said, we need the whole concept. Sis, that's all I got. The the few minutes is is, is all I I what <laughs> yeah, that's what I was uh, gonna say from just a little snippet of the, the video. Um, I would need the, to kind of see where she was coming from and like how she, but I mean, but the, the poem she, you know, was kind of saying the seed to produce. I'm like, okay, but um, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, babe, I got the hill. I just want to know what, what scriptural time Versus something. Yeah, come what on. You use, I, can man? Of, I can think of some scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely think of some scriptures, but I guess maybe I, I can think of the seed scripture, not the sure. not not the other thing. Not, right. you know, not the bodily organ or ball or whatever. Are we allowed right. to do right here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um I don't know. I I mean, I guess when you're trying to be relevant to, and, and it certainly seems as though, just in her defense, no, it, her defense her. it certainly seems that like the, the people that she is speaking to understand her language. Cause That's fair. Oh, got the church. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Alexis. I'm laughing at a comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, she knew her audience. That's one of the things that you do as a preacher. You gotta know your audience. Um, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> you know what? And that was so beautifully put. 
that that was so that was so beautifully put. Latasha, uh, La what you got to say, sis? <laughs> Um, it sounds really worldly to me. <laughs> that part. It just sound. I mean, it's just, yeah, it just sounds like, again, I keep, can you guys hear me? I keep yeah. going back to the conforming. We're starting to look like instead of it being the other way, we're trying to be like the world to appeal to the world. When it shouldn't be that way. So, I mean, have I heard that phrase used on the street and, you know, amongst sure. people? Absolutely. I, right. I, I truly know what the, the phrase mean, but would I say it in church <laughs> in front of everybody? No. So I just think that it's, it's one of those things where we are conforming to the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think I introduced this by talking about being mannish because not that her delivery, besides the actual words she was saying, not that anything that she necessarily did was wrong. Right. But it felt it felt hard to me. It, it felt hard around the exterior to me. And that's why I brought up the the point of, of, of women um, preachers sometimes being mannish because. That's what that felt like, not what she said, how she was acting. Um, and I've seen, I've seen women preachers hoop and do the whole thing and be just as feminine and, and dainty, but that's not really the topic. Here's the thing. Who, why do you feel like it's okay to, to use such language? I, I think the language is, it, it, it it was loose. It was a little too colloquial. It was, could have been very much seen as disrespectful. Um, one of our, one of our um, viewers said the people were going crazy though. Right. But does that make it right? Be just because people are losing their minds and, you know, are, are, appearing to be fed by this, to be fed by this, it, it does that make it okay? You know, um, Alicia, you know, you made a, a very good point uh, because people tend to forget that you can get an emotional response when you go to a local assembly, when you go to a church. And it does not mean that it's the spirit of God, if that makes uh, sense. You, uh, got to, you have to remember that um, using certain sounds and words and different things like that can cause an emotional response. So yeah. people may think it's the spirit, but no, nah, it's just your mm. stomach. You're just getting butterflies. You're just getting excited. Right. And it's kind of like what Latasha was saying. Um, sometimes I think as, uh, cause I myself, you know, am a, I don't really call myself a preacher, but I have, you know, You're preached and different things like that. I am, an, I am an evangelist. And I believe sometimes it's you may feel as if you have to put put this on or do this and perform, if that makes sense, yeah, for the sake yeah. of getting an emotional response to let you know, oh, I did something well. But I'm here to tell you that if it's not being led by the spirit of God, I don't care what happens emotionally. There is no deliverance. There is no change. Like after they, leave, after they leave your presence, how can they apply what they say to their life to provoke that repentance to re, re, uh, provoke sanctification. Like you feel what I'm saying? So I think sometimes, um, especially as preachers, speakers, motivational, however you want to call yourself, it's like at the end of the day, you have to remember, you have to, it has to be led by the spirit of God. When you get up and you talk to people, whether you hoop or you could be kind of like my sister. My sister is very mellow, very like, you know what I'm saying? She's a teacher at heart. So when she gets in front of, she teaches. I'm the preacher. I'm loud. I'm voices. Yeah. I mean, if you take my class, you already kind of <laughs> you see that in me. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, I just think that sometimes people have a tendency to draw from themselves and how they can make the audience feel. And you can get that same response from a football game. Like you feel what I'm saying? It's, it's the same. You trigger those same emotions. But I, but I think that you could have eloquent words and get the same response and still be empty as well. And That's true. I, I, I come from a different perspective on this. And so, like, we don't have to agree. But, I mean, you think about Jesus calling a woman a, a dog. That was equivalent of, I mean, that was that a cuss word? I mean, yeah, it was. 
you know, or calling somebody a pig or like in our in our gospels and stuff like that. I, I don't know if I understand the tradition of the church and which I do value and respect. I respect it. But I'm also I don't know if we have the authority necessarily to say what um, to I mean, I mean, God's words are so are 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 beyond human conception, you know, or and 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 I guess. I guess like there's th there was this one debate where th this was a preacher who cursed from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. I I personally don't do that. Um, but she had she was able to reach and convert folks who were on the street because she spoke their language. And and I mean, who who am I to say that they? I mean, these were these were people who were who were um um they were getting baptized and yet they they turn their lives around and they knew Christ and, but Christ in their way and, and, and they love their neighbors and, and you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know in terms of language. I don't know, like, I don't know in terms of sanctification. I don't know if I, I I'm just, I, I would like to see the whole, I would like right, to see the whole, whole event. And I like to see like, what was the purpose? You know, what are you, compelling folks to do because yes you can hoop and holler all the time there are people who who go to church all the time they hoop and holler and then they're mean in the parking lot and they're mean they're mean to their neighbors and you wouldn't know that they go to anybody's church because they won't let you over when you're driving and what what type of sanctification is that and i and i, I see your point Alexis. and to tawana's point i don't think she was saying that just because you speak well or do this is why we're here. This is why we're having the conversation. But yes, it, it doesn't mean that when we do everything right or what seems right to people, that is that's what reaches people. If it's spirit led, I think that's the thing. I don't know. I I, I've heard preachers, you know, slip a curse word in sometimes by mistake, sometimes on purpose. Um but I, I just don't know if I am okay with, to me, it's different between something being vulgar. I, I think, Absolutely. I, you know, I think you can say certain things, but I think vulgarity has a, a lot to do with how I receive what you say. So I may, you may say something nicely packaged and everybody might not get it, but you still may be able to flip that thing in a way that's not vulgar, that it still reaches people. For mm -hmm. you to tell me, mm -hmm. go get my balls, I, I, that did something to me that I, I, and if it did reach people, glory to God. But I, <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I just, whew, I'm telling y'all, it, it was just rough for me to see that. It was rough for me to see that and hear that because I just didn't know how that fit into anything, honestly. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Anybody else have anything to say on this? Because I'm, I'm just, you know, I, and I, I think that we have to be careful, especially in the, in the age of social media, um, because what we say sometimes back in the day, there was a such thing as this is a word for my house, right? This is a word just for my house or my church. That's not possible anymore because of these things, right? Because there's somebody recording you. There's somebody, um, that, that's going to get this out. And we just have to be careful on how we do what we do. How you reach God. I mean, how you reach people. I can't tell you how to reach people. I, I can't tell you, like you said, Alexis, you know, somebody who cut, cursed, you know, and it drew people. Well, I'm different in that. Oh, that's her ministry. That's her right. ministry. And I'm you not know. upset at her ministry. However, comma for me, 
The reason why that doesn't work for me is because how are you different from me? How are you offering me something that's different from what I am? If you're not helping me to be better, if you're if what you're bringing me is not a change, if what you're bringing me is not a difference, then why do I need to go with you? I like you said, I already love my neighbors because I might be in a gang or some affiliation where I I know what loyalty means. I love my neighbors. I love my brothers. I look after the people in my community. I already live by a code. Why do I need your code? What makes your code better than my code if it's somewhat the same? And I don't know if that's my thought process. It's, and it's ahead, similar Tasha. to someone who used to be on drugs. And they say, you know, when you get off drugs, don't forget what it's like to be in a drug house. Okay, but when you go back to the drug house to reach those people, you don't sit down and do the drugs with them just to appeal to them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my thing. I, and, and I don't like to call church people perfect. I mean, because I have a Christian blog, I have a Christian book, but I'm still human. But I think we just have to be careful how we try to appeal to people, um, especially when it comes to the word of God. Because even like me, when I'm studying the word sometimes, I have to be careful with the translations that I use. Mm -hmm. Cause if you, you, if you, if it gets too loose, you start misinterpreting scripture and you start allowing room for things to slip in. So I guess my whole thing is even when I'm writing the blog, even when I was writing my book, even when I'm, I hate to say ministering cause I'm not a minister. Even when I'm speaking to people and giving my testimony, one thing that I say all the time on my platform is that I always try to make it Refer, revert back or end with the word of God because how I feel may change how I think may change I can wake up tomorrow and realize that ain't even the way to reach people and be convicted but what will not change is the word of God mm -hmm. so I just try to stick with that and sis should have stuck with that <laughs> it, it just depends on what you read sis because I'm telling you when I read we read every Saturday I mean, I mean, with my family and like some of the stuff, like when you look at it and you're like, wow, this happened in the Bible. Wow. This person was, this person was downright rude and ruthless. And I don't see, it's not, uh, it's not, um, there are people in there. The characters in there are very messy and they're human and they, and they, and they talk from their language. So it, it we have interpreted that oh they were you know our interpretations we look at them like oh they they did they did but like if you look at it like no he he just backstabbed his his that was a backstabbing like that was i don't i mean that's what i see you know i see people who are very imperfect in trying to sojourn and trying to understand what does this mean to to, to love and value god and to love my neighbor but but it is not as crystal clean as we we put it in the in you know in the church like it's not it's is to me it, and, it's and Alex, you are absolutely right and here's the thing that i'll make to that point i absolutely agree with you the lives of the people in the bible were very messy and they lived their lives of course in a different time but very similarly to how we live our lives now being that every situation every circumstance there's nothing new under the sun right so things have happened things have um transpired that they dealt with in human form i will say this um i don't know if the pulpit well i'm just saying that like yeah, look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Like, if you look at it from the from the perspective of why even Jesus was an outcast, why right. he was marginalized, because Peter and all of them, you look in Acts, they were unlearned. They were right. unlearned, but they had the power of the Holy Spirit. They did not fit in to the typical church. And so, like, we have to be very careful that we're not becoming self-righteous and condemning folks because we don't know where the spirit, where the spirit is, is moving. We can't, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm just very careful. I'm just, I would like to look at the fruit. I like to see what, what they are bearing. Are people, are lives being transformed? Because are people, are people changing, putting down the guns and now they picking up a Bible and, and, and they're doing things in their community. That's fruit. You know what I'm right. saying? And I agree. But, but if they are talking and if we are caught up in, in their language, because 
because that was very, that was people, the, the, the Hebrew boys, if they couldn't recite the Torah, they wouldn't be able to be a Sadducee and Pharisee. So basically, if you had a memory, you would be a Pharisee and a Sadducee. And so what they did was create a whole structure and isolated a whole group of people that Jesus brought in. So right. I, and I, and I, I agree, I agree with you, but I also truly believe that the number one example we should follow is that of Jesus being mm -hmm. among those who may need us, right? Being mm -hmm. among those don't stay in the church and don't necessarily be self-righteous and all that type of stuff. But Jesus didn't, I, I appreciate Peter, right? Because my mouth is not always as clean as it should be. So thanks be unto God that I got Peter to, to, you know, hold on to, but there's, there's, still a place. There's still a, a situation to me. There has to be a transformation that takes place. And if I'm yeah. following, if I'm following Jesus's example, then I am around these people. I don't exclude these people. I love these people, Absolutely. but I do not make myself, I do not put myself in the place where I have to do what they do in order to reach these people. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I think what we can learn from the people in the Bible who were unlearned and the people who made these mistakes and the people who were not perfect is I can do it too, being imperfect, not necessarily follow your example of being imperfect, if That's that it. makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I can do it too because I have my issues, but I'm not going to be a disciple of Peter because I want to cuss and Peter cuss. Right. And, and, you know, and, 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 and with that, um, it's like one of those examples too, where it shows that God still used them and loved them despite of. So that's also a thing that you can use. But I'm like you, I was told to be like Christ. I wasn't told to be like Peter, even though that's an example. Because even when we go back to the, not to take it all the way back, Will and Jada, Sarah used Hagar. Right. And it still ended up being a disaster. So there's many examples in the Bible where people messed up where people were imperfect and people did their own things. But I don't think I was called to be like Sarah. It was, this is what happened to Sarah. And this is what can happen to you if you do what Sarah did. Right. And I appreciate yeah, Alexis. I, I'm going to let you talk to one. I completely appreciate your perspective and I do understand it. I'm not at all saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying. Oh, no, my I, point of view, I, yeah, no. I am good with, we we can live together in, so in uh, harmony. In <laughs> <laughs> right, and I, and I appreciate, I absolutely appreciate your perspective. Tawana? Um, yeah, so I was, um, as you all were talking, I was going to say, just thinking about, you know, my conclusion is this, you know, um, whether you are on the pulpit, because I am one, um, I am in the business sector, you know, the church, and I sometimes people kind of try to separate the two, and I feel like you can marriage them together. Like, you feel what I'm saying? I feel like... Um, and when I say church, I'm, you know, talking about the body of Christ as a whole and then going to your local assembly, wherever that may be, you know, however that may look, you go there pretty much to get filled, to go out. You feel what I'm right. saying? Absolutely. And, 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 what, and whatever sphere you're in, my question would be, are you pointing them to Jesus? Whatever, whatever you, whatever it is, are you pointing whatever them to Christ? Method. Right. Whatever your method is. And you cannot do that outside of the Holy Spirit. It cannot happen. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So however she was trying to present it or anyone else, you know, I would, that would be my thing. Whatever you're doing, whether you're a CEO, whether you're a trainer, you're a wife, you're a mom, you're a father, whatever it is, are you pointing the people you are around, whether it's people under you, you know, on the same plane as you, it's kind of like the cross type of analogy. You have, you know, people above you that you learn from, then your, your peers, the cross, and then there's people that below you that you, not below you, but that you pour into basically. And um, with that whole thing, are you pointing them to Christ? Like you feel what I'm saying? And making sure that the spirit is there um, at all times. Cause I do believe that, um, I'm not sure exactly how I heard a, a preacher say, but basically it's like, you can't heal or minister to someone if you're still struggling with the same thing. If you have not been delivered from that, like you feel what I'm saying? Like I can't, I can't minister to you in a sense that I can't bring preach, preach or bring deliverance to you, however that may look, whether it's just through a grocery store conversation or whatever. If I'm still 
Because at the end of the day, our conversation going to end up being, girl, I'm struggling. Girl, yeah, girl, I'm struggling too. And we both just struggling. <laughs> Let's go get a drink and talk about it. <laughs> when drinks are our issue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and I and I I'm glad we had this conversation because um, I, I always want to bring different views to the table. And I'm going to read a couple more comments, and then we're going to call it a night. Um, Pastor Centrell said there are certain people who won't sit under pastors or go to certain churches because they're too worldly. I agree with that, um, and that's an appeal for some people, right? Mm -hmm. Some people like the way people worship. Some people like the way that. Um, a pastor delivers his message and that appeals to them. So that's why they go there. My daddy says there's a preacher for every creature. And I believe that <laughs> just because it's not my taste doesn't mean it's not somebody else's taste. And um, Elizabeth said that I don't agree with the language, but the Bible says, come as you are. You have to meet people where they are. I agree with that. But um, I still just think we have to be careful sometimes. I'm not suggesting that this woman didn't reach people. I just think, you know, we have to be careful in our delivery and the mm -hmm. things that we say, just making sure that it's spirit led because, you know, I could have been going all out with sis. But for me personally, the moment she said that, that would have yanked me back a little bit because I would have been like, now, wait, what's happening? And maybe it wasn't for me. OK, so that can mm -hmm. be fair. You know, I'll, I'll say that. But it caught me off guard and, and I just didn't really know how to take it because like I said, there's a way to be real and there's a way to relate to people without being vulgar. And I just yeah, felt that I, that was a little on the line, <laughs> just a little, just a little. Was somebody going to say something? Yeah. And I was going to say, um, yeah, I think it is great. You meet people where they are, but guess what? We can't, we can't, we can't stay here. Like that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I I can meet you on a corner, but sis, we we going up, okay? Right, so I right. can meet you. I can do whatever it takes because to I mean, at, because at the same time, again, you know, by me being in the business field, you know, you deal with all different type of people. Yes. And honestly, everybody is not churched. Everybody is not going to hear the message in a church setting. Like mm -hmm. you feel what I'm saying? Like we are epistles read of men daily. But um, right. yeah, we could sit down and we could talk, but we're not going. We're not going to stay where we are. We got right. to grow in Christ. Right. You know what I mean? So, right. yeah. Right. Yeah. Tasha, you wanted to say something? Or Alexis, any no, last words? I was going okay. to say that that's it. Like, it's to come as you are with the thing that you will leave differently. Mm -hmm. Not keep coming as you are. You come to be transformed. Yeah. So, well, I just, my, my interpretation, and, you know, I'm United Methodist. So, like, we have this whole stance on grace and mm -hmm. how God's. God's grace transforms us. And God is always the actor there, you know? And and I can I can say that there are certain things that I that I thought I was doing to please God. And God didn't ask me to do that. Right. And I think we could all say that at some point. You know what but, I'm saying? I'm saying, but I'm saying that God's transforming love like this, like this overwhelming power, you know, transforms us and Sometimes when we are so rigid, we can be a little bit Pharisee. That's 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 my that's my experience. You know, we're like, oh no, you can't you can't listen to that anymore. I remember when I first got to say, oh no, don't don't do that, don't do that. You can't do that. And really, I had just in loving kindness, God, you know, I draw near. You know, I changed. I want I wanted to know more about God. I, I, I mean, that love drew me where I want to listen to I want to listen to church music all the time because I just want to be closer. It was the love. It wasn't a forced um, situation. It was it was God's transforming grace. So, like, I just that's that's where I come from as United Methodist. That's. Can I say one more thing? Sure. One more thing to uh, what Alexis said. I agree uh, because I think a lot of times um, as believers, we focus so much on telling people what they can and cannot do. And, and we don't give them the opportunity. Instead of folk, love on Jesus, the more you love on Jesus, the more he begins to change. Now, you have to be an active participant. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, you can't just be like, OK, Jesus, do it, Father. And you just land there. Nah, and you I have to get up there. Right. Your word. <laughs> Jesus your already word, done it over 2,000 years ago, but you have to, your mind have to be renewed into what has already been done. But I think people do focus so much on, oh, you can't do this. You can't get tattoos. Oh, you can't drink. Oh, you can't listen. You can't. 
Babe it. Take the time to spend just just love on Jesus. And I promise you, he will begin, he'll start taking those appetites. When you like, you know, I ain't had a drink or whatever it is. I'm not saying right. drink is bad. Whatever I'm, I'm not, but I'm just using that as an example because you know right. people say that. You know, you'd be like, man, I ain't had a drink in like two, you know, two days. Like you feel what I'm saying? So I think stop focusing so much on what we would consider sin or what is a sin and just point people to Jesus. That's my thing. But yeah. you go ahead. What you say, Tash? I was about to say, I agree with all that, but I think these are two different topics. Uh -huh. I think the vulgarity in the pulpit and the rigidness are two different topics, but I do, I wholeheartedly agree with what you guys are saying, but mm -hmm. I don't think that that fits the mold. But <laughs> I do also want to say that I listen to T.D. Jake sometimes, and at first, because I didn't want to be convicted, I was like, he, he preached too much, I don't have time for that. He makes the comment all the time that the church now is, is flowery because mm -hmm. we all want to be told just have faith, you know? Um, and it's true. Grace does, you know, we are, God does give us grace and all of that is fine and dandy, but we have things that have to be done on our part as Christians too. And I think that's the part that no one wants to be told. And that's the part that no one wants to focus on. We want to just preach that if you have faith and if you just love, that is good. And, and, and that is in the Bible. But we also have to remember that we are called to a certain way of living and a certain way of life, even if it does seem rigid. And Amen. we talked about this before on our last segment, uh, Alicia, where we talked about how when you call people out, they think you're being judgmental. Like, no, I'm telling you what the word says. <laughs> right, like, right. It's so it, it's a touchy, thin line. It is because a touchy. now everybody, everybody wants to just be told to have faith and but Just that's believe. not what we're doing. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying. Well, I'm not saying you're yeah. saying that. No, 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 no. No, yeah. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, oh, don't, oh, 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 don't. Yeah, don't get it twisted. It's grace, and you respond to it. You are. You oh, are. Respond to it. So you didn't clean yourself. You you can't earn it. You can't. You can't. Oh, stop right. Absolutely. It. Because Absolutely. if you stop cussing and you still are mean and you don't love your neighbor like as yourself, it's the same thing. Yes. It's the same, right? So right. It doesn't. Yeah, you know. So like our the the commandment, the greatest commandment, love God is love, and, and the greatest of these love. and love neighbor as yourself. Yeah, Absolutely. and 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 Jesus, you know, Jesus had a rebuking ministry. He did. Listen, he wasn't Listen. afraid. He wasn't afraid Listen. to rebuke the church folks. Listen, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen. So, and that was, of course, controversial. You know, he flipped tables when he was like, This not supposed to be happening. He didn't have a problem speaking his mind, and it, it didn't always seem like maybe the right way to go about it. But I, I think what we're, we're trying to say is, um, like Latasha said, it is a bit of a different conversation to talk about um, grace and, and, and what happened with this lady on this this live because can we be honest there is a there is a level of responsibility that's higher for yes, a preacher I there agree. is a level of responsibility for leaders for too much given much is required and I you agree. can't tell me, you know there, there's a list of things about deacons like he must be the man of one you know husband of one wife if there are things that if you want to be in ministry i'm sorry but you got to you have to walk a little higher on the road than than others because this is a calling on your life. And if we're going to answer the call, we have to be prepared to live up to a standard. No, we're not perfect at all. Yes, we fall. Yes, we fail. Yes, we have so many issues because we are human. However, we are held to a higher standard and we need to be prepared to for other Christians who may not really mean us harm. I think that's like Tasha said, I think that's another thing. When when we talk about stuff like this and people see it, Christians get a bad, bad, bad rep for every time we say something is to be negative. Yes, and then this was a yes. little this was a little comedy, right? So um but I think we get that that oh y'all just so judgmental. Well no, but what is happening here? Can we not have a critical eye? I want people to have a critical eye on what I'm doing because if I am doing anything that's not bringing glory to God and I, for some reason, I can't see that because I'm blinded by, like Alexa said, there were things that you we think that we're doing that God never told us to do. 
right? And because the crowds mm -hmm. are going crazy, we think yes. we're doing right. But when somebody comes to me and say, Alicia, you are operating in Eresis, I have to be able to look at the source to make sure this person is lined up with the Holy Spirit and say, receive it in love and take, eat the meat and throw the bones away. Right. So I don't have to necessarily say, oh, you're 100% right. But there may be some truth to that because God can speak through a donkey. Right. So he can make sense out of absolutely nothing or he can make sense out of foolish things. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that this has been an excellent conversation. And I'm so glad, Alexis, I'm so glad you were on this um on this conversation because we needed that different perspective. So I really appreciate that. And please send me, send me this preacher that's, that's doing all this cussing because I might need to call her <laughs> and ask her how I can slip it into my next sermon. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> yes, send me a couple, sis. Send me a couple. I am so appreciative for you all um, coming on tonight. Tasha, this is your second time back, but sis, I'm going to be calling you again. Alexis Tawana, this is your first time on, but I will be calling you all back as well. I really appreciate it. Any last things you want to say to the people before we say goodnight? Thank you, um, ladies, Latasha and Tawana and Alicia. It was fun. Absolutely. It was. Thank you. I appreciated your opposing views. It's always good to have a healthy diet. It is. It is. It is. Any last words, Miss Tawana? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was it was actually really fun. Uh, I really appreciated the dialogue and even like the comments and stuff that people were saying and how it was, you know, how you were able to kind of pin it to the screen who was able to see. So listen, I I was ready. I'm like, come on, let's keep going. I don't know yes. we can't be here all night, but I'm like, yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. And this is the first time we did the She Shed. So I am so excited that this went so well. And ladies, like I said, I will be calling you all back. Uh, we're having having a men versus women. I don't want to say versus because that sounds so opposed, but just, you know, to have some conversations about how um, men and women think differently about things. And we will be doing that all next month. So I'm excited about that. Oh, so if cool. I call y'all, make Listen. sure you pick up the line, okay? Pick up the line. <laughs> but thank y'all for making this first She Shed um, uh, show I mean, it couldn't have been more perfect. And I appreciate every one of you ladies. And I pray that God blesses you each in your individual ministries and everything that you're doing. And Elizabeth said, growing and glowing. Yes, ladies, keep growing, keep glowing. And I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies, until next time, we'll be right here. Make sure you tune in next week for another episode of Churchy Chess with the Church Girl, right here, same place, same time. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night.